It's just three days before fight night. Publicity train barrels forward, picking up steam with an open workout in Santa Monica, California. The boxing media gets their last look at Saturday's headliners in action. Rubio appears fit and confident. Bueno, vamos a tratar de, de, de entrar con confianza, con, con seguridad más bien, no confianza, con seguridad y, y hacer nuestro trabajo. Gennady is the last to enter the ring. With all respect to the other fighters, he is the main attraction. Triple G's fans are eager for his West Coast debut and for the 32-year-old Kazakh boxer to show off the Mexican style that has left his last 17 opponents on the canvas. Thursday, now just two days before the fight, the final press conference in Manhattan Beach, California. So what is your expected outcome of Saturday night's fight, and what do you hope to see from your fighter? I hope that he stays patient early. I hope that he doesn't get uh, involved in a, in a crazy fight. Um, <laughs> you know, because anything can happen. Marco can punch. Yeah. You know, anything can happen in boxing. Everything seems to be moving predictably towards Saturday night's main event, when Friday's weigh-in throws a wrench in the works. Golovkin looks like his usual chiseled self at 159 pounds, comfortably under the 160 pound cutoff for the middleweight division. Marco Antonio Rubio, however, comes in at 161.8 pounds. He's given two hours to lose the excess weight, but either can't or won't. After negotiations between the camps, the fight will go on, but at a significant cost to Rubio, he forfeits $100,000 of his purse and vacates his interim middleweight title. Golovkin's own middleweight title is no longer at stake should Rubio prevail. But this fight is still critical for Team Triple G. A win earns him the vacated interim belt, and most importantly, the winner becomes the mandatory challenger to the WBC middleweight champion, Miguel Cotto. Even if Cotto exercises a voluntary title defense against Sal Canelo Alvarez first, a victory would mean that Triple G steps into the ring with one of the division's elite in 2015. It's Saturday, October 18th, fight night. And Carson, California's Stub Hub Center is brimming with energy, excitement, and fans. The fight is sold out. Adding additional bleacher seating twice and then standing room only seats has made this the most popular boxing event in the venue's history. Triple G's West Coast fans are out in force. But inside Triple G's locker room, it's a different story. Gennady, good boy Glofkin, is calm and relaxed. Before the fight, he relaxed. It's uh, just easy. Because he's a really, really professional guy. His mind under, uh, under control, and uh, you know, if he uh, came to, to the arena in the locker room, he has a lot of fun with his brother, he, with uh, our uh, friend Killer, and with, uh, for sure, with uh, Abel. I try to keep it. Uh quiet, I try to keep it uh, very business-like. I don't like a lot of noise in the, in the dressing room. I don't like a lot of people in the dressing room because uh, all those people are, have no clue what it's like to be concentrating or focusing for, uh, for the task at hand. So if they're in my way, I kick them out. I have no problem doing that. Gennady's a very likable uh, person outside the ring. I mean, he's got one of the best characters that I've ever seen. And that combination is such a unique quality that he has. And then something changes. The good boy we've seen throughout training and fight week becomes the god of war, who decimates opponents with brutal precision. Two, three minutes before the fight, he, he will be a monster, you know. He has a whole concentration on the fight calls it his predator instinct inside the ring. My focus, you know, my mentality, just, I my focus just for my fight, for my opponent, because I know my job, you know, my focus for my job.
the uh, walkout that we designed for the Gennady to walk around the, uh, the, the, the floor of the, of the arena. I think it was a really great idea um, and uh, to, to bring Gennady to the people, to the fans. We wanted to show our appreciation for them turning out so to get a closer feel for Gennady. Triple G enters the arena in Dodger Blue. The first round goes much like Abel Sanchez predicted. His fighter comes forward, cutting off angles and feeling out his distance with Rubio. As expected, Rubio doesn't back down and even connects with a few solid shots. But by the end of the first round, Triple G is already starting to get more aggressive unleashing several powerful right hands to the head of Rubio. The scales appear to be tipping. The fans are getting the show they came for. Two powerful punchers who prefer a fast tempo and an offensive style. The second round picks up where round one left off. Triple G aggressively attacks Rubio with more combinations to the head and body, each flurry setting up increasingly damaging punches. Rubio appears hurt by a right uppercut. Rubio's floored by an overhand left hook. His night's over. Another dominating performance by Gennady Triple G Golovkin and another belt for his growing collection. The fight was short, but it didn't disappoint his fans. They came here to see a knockout, and that's exactly what Gennady delivered. Fight Saturday night went really well. It was amazing. Another spectacular two-round domination of a world-class opponent in front of a full sold-out house, sold-out uh, arena at the Stub-Up Center under the open California skies. So we were really happy with the way everything went. All the members of the team are uh, happy about the, the fight and uh, the promotion and the whole uh, event. And uh, Mexican style, you know, Gennady's ID and uh, Tom uh, asked us uh, about uh, the Mexican style because we wanted to, to make the fight against uh, Rubio and uh, it's fit really perfect together. Well, it was, uh, yeah, I heard there was uh, some big tailgate parties in the in the parking lot and it fit with the, the theme of, uh, you know, Mexican style just really, uh, really captured the essence of the, of the fight. I feel it's great, you know, it's serious business, easy work. <laughs> HBO was ecstatic about the fight. You can't get a better champion than Gennady with his, his personal characteristics and his likability and uh, with a rating of uh, 1.3 uh, million households, uh, it was the second highest rated fight of the year and when you take someone from Kazakhstan who nobody really knew in the United States except for really hardcore boxing fans and then in less than two years with a combination of our marketing efforts on the promotional side and HBO's platform and their marketing efforts we've turned him into one of the, the biggest stars in the sport of boxing. Although most witnesses agreed that Golovkin pummeled Rubio convincingly, Rubio's own promoter felt like the knockout blow was something that his fighter should have absorbed feeding the argument that Rubio called it quits prematurely. Fighter and promoter have since parted ways. Oh, next for me is a good question. I think so. Next weekend we're going to Monaco, like, talking about it. Next fight, I think Martin Murray. That would be the optimal opponent for, for Gennady. Murray is a, is a great, uh, middleweight contender. He, uh, many people feel he beat Sergio Martinez in Argentina, which is probably one of the hardest things to do uh, at that time when Sergio was still very dominant. And uh, Murray had a great performance against Sergio. It would just be a great fight that HBO would show live over here, and it would be prime time in the European markets, which is another. We want to keep the fans in, in Europe and in the, the Russian-speaking countries in close touch with, with Gennady's career so that so that they can watch him in prime time as well. Golovkin has earned some rest. Yeah, just relaxing, yes, yeah, but not just with my family. But he and Team Triple G aren't slowing down. My plan uh, 
for next year. I hope so, four fights per year. And maybe first step in February, second step in May. I hope so we will uh, be pay-per-view fighter uh, next year. You know. Our team wants to, to, to promote him around the world. Number one is for sure is the uh, United States, but uh, we want to, to make promotion around the world and maybe one le uh, year later we'd make a big, big uh, event in Kazakhstan. Gennady Golovkin and Martin Murray will face off in Monte Carlo on February 21st. Can Golovkin continue his unprecedented knockout streak or will the third time be the charm for Murray, who's come up short in two previous title fights?